via telephone line, the Senate President Craig Blair. Mr. Blair, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Great to have you with us. You guys were busy over the weekend. I saw that there is a 21% tax cut bill now that also addresses other things the Senate has worked its way through. PEIA has been seriously addressed, too, by the Senate. Craig, where would you like to begin? Because you're going to take me there no matter which question I ask you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with this. Uh, first of all, I've got to be done this interview at 930. Uh, and then what we've done here is basically a three-legged stool. Uh, and they all need they all work in unison together to be able to make a package that works long-term for the people of West Virginia. The, so let's talk with personal, uh, the, well, the tax reduction plan. It can't call it personal income tax anymore. Uh, there's a 21.25% reduction in the personal income tax. Uh, and that uh, will... I, 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 how, how I want to put this, it takes place in the in the coming year, and uh, that one uh, is the base for where we uh, came to an agreement on. The next one is is that we do a hundred percent refundable tax credit on the personal property taxes paid on your vehicles, okay, and so that we. That, Look, we've got a lot of people in West Virginia, uh, both seniors and the working poor, that wouldn't benefit from the personal income tax uh, reduction of 21.25%. So this helps with that. And then there's a 50% refundable tax credit on the personal property tax for West Virginia small businesses. And then there's one other one, and that, that's got a cap on it, too. Uh, that's where you've got a million dollars or less of on your uh, assessed value on your 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 property and so that affects a lot i think it's like 74,000 businesses of uh, and so th that's something that you would apply it back to there and that could even apply to a c corp believe it or not <clears throat> I, I found that hard to believe, but there are still C corps in the state of West Virginia that only have two or three employees. Uh, and I, I found that very interesting. I'd be upset with their accountant, I think, uh, by doing that. But it is what it is from that standpoint. Uh, but then uh, a refundable tax credit for disabled veterans on the personal property tax paid on the homestead. Uh, so that's where that's at for the tax tax relief plan. Now you move over to the PIA. And the PIA uh, has been a train wreck. And remember when the teachers on strike, they said that we needed to fix PIA. Yes. Well, this gets us back to the 80-20, and it puts things in place that makes it so that structurally it's going to be a lot better off than what it was. When we, By the time we get to 2028, uh, that, that – if everything goes as it's currently projected, uh, this is going to have over $250 million savings, and that helps keep the plan solvent. And, you know, and this also means that we get the reimbursement rates up, and that's something that we passed on the very first day of the session, but it, it brings all that in line uh, for being able to to manage PIA long-term into the future. Uh, let's see. There's a, a pay raises then. And that's why I said it's a three-legged stool. There'll be a $2,300 pay raise. And that makes it so that the lowest earners, of, and that's across the board, no matter what you make in the state, of whether it's 20, you make $20,000 a year or you make $200,000 a year, your pay raise would be $2,300. And it's because of the PIA reforms that we're doing that uh, you don't want to make it so that uh, the people that are, say, a janitor that is working uh, someplace that's making $20,000 a year, that you put such a burden on them that they can't afford the changes to the PEIA. 
uh, and those that are on the top end of the scale uh, can be able to afford it, but nobody gets hurt uh, by doing this. There's uh, no changes in the PIA where it would exceed the 2300 But then remember, those high wage earners I just talked about will be getting a 21.25% reduction in their personal income tax to begin with. So it makes it so that it's a win-win-win across the board for everybody. Uh, and then the last bill that we passed uh, was the budget bill. And the budget bill was 4.8%. $8 billion this year. It's no longer a flat budget, uh, but uh, we incorporated all the work that we've done on the Senate side and sent it over to the House. And this is uh, part of my doing. I wanted the budget. It's not our year to run the budget. Uh, odd years or House years, even years, or Senate years to be able to start to run the budget. But what we did was is it wasn't meant to step on the toes of anybody in the House delegates or anything like that. What it was is, is a telegraphing of letting them know where the Senate was at and things so that as they go through working their budget and all, that they could actually see of where the Senate was and some stuff, and it would help them be able to manage the process so that we could be able to get the is done within the 60-day session. Uh, there's, there's one other point, and I'm, I'm drawing a blank on it, that I wanted to, oh, oh, on PIA, backing up to that for a minute, we were missing out on millions and millions and millions of dollars because of the way that we were just plugging money into the PIA trust fund that it, out of the general revenue budget. It got us away from doing our 80-40 or 80-20. And then what happens with this is, is that we were ending up subsidizing, the state was, uh, federal employees that were being working in underneath our structure. Uh, this happens a lot in uh, the education and the DHHR. And so this gets it back, and so now we're able to draw down those federal dollars and bring that into the PI system that wasn't being done before. Uh, when it, and it, it was because of how we were uh, keeping PI uh, above water, so to speak. So there you go. I'll try to answer questions uh, on what's going on, but we've got we, – there was a lot of work that went into this on the Senate side to be able to get everything together. And when I say a lot of work, this is talking about communicating with the House and the Senate, and we all work together as a team. So almost everything that we've got here is agreed to uh, on both ends of the building right. and the governor's office, for that matter. That was my first question. So is this a pretty good indication of – what the final tax cut legislation will look like then, correct? Yes. Nice, easy answer. Yes. When would the 21.25% reduction in the personal income tax kick in? Next tax year. Well, to, actually, it, it's, I, I got that wrong. It's, uh, the taxes that you're earning right now, it kicks in. Uh, it's a little bit confusing because half of it, uh, to, the state runs a fiscal year and taxes run a calendar year. The cost to the state uh, to begin with is half, but it's retroactive from the standpoint of it's in this year that we're, we're, your, your wages that you're earning at this year right now, it kicks in for that. And is, Does that make sense? Yes. What, what would be for the full year, when it's kicked in for a full year, what would the fiscal note be for this plan? I can't remember. Is it in excess Sorry. of $600 million? Uh, no, it's less than that. Uh, in fact, let me back up for a minute. I've got my notes from when I was I, dealing with this. I, Talk for a minute while yeah, okay. I'm pulling my notes yeah. up. Uh, I believe, uh, Craig, uh, at least the governor said it's going to be $750 million. No, you, you, you're misunderstanding. Okay. Uh, the total is $760 million. This is why I needed my notes uh, to be able to tell you where it was at. The 21.25% is and 556 No, it's not 556 It's a little bit over $556 million. 
for the personal income tax reduction. Personal property tax on automobiles will be about $130 million. The personal property tax on equipment machinery will be $35 million. And the veterans one is calculated to be $4 million. So the total overall is $760 million. I think it came in just a a million shy of that or whatever thank you craig you're exactly right i misread my notes uh 598 i'll see it now uh is where for personal income tax 598 Uh, so craig congratulations on what's been a very heavy lift i think you and your colleagues have done a very nice job of putting together a very complex plan and a very i think probably a very good plan so congratulations uh, I do have a couple of questions, uh, and I may have misunderstood you or may have misunderstood reading Senate Bill 150 last night. Uh, that's personal property uh, tax for vehicles. Uh, you said 100%, and I thought it was 50%. Nope. You're confusing the two of them. Uh, for t- t- um, personal property tax on automobiles is 100%. Okay, and when it comes to equipment, machinery, and inventory for businesses that have less than $1 million of assessed value, that is what the 50% is. Yeah, I had that as 50, but I, but I also had as 50% for uh, uh, vehicles. But, okay, so 100%, I'm not going to 100%. Is that a tax credit or is that a tax rebate? That's a tax credit. Tax credit. And okay. now, it'll actually, you don't want to do a rebate. If you do a rebate, then our people, the people of West Virginia, end up paying taxes, federal taxes on that. And so this is the way that you get around it. You do it as, and it's not ideal, uh, but I don't want to go back into the Amendment 2 world, okay, of that this is not an ideal way of going about doing it, but it is the way that we can do it. And let's say that you don't pay any taxes or you did, you did didn't have any taxes, then you'll still get a check back from the tax department for the value of what you paid towards your automobiles. Okay. What about per, uh, marriage penalty? Was that a, uh, was that fixed? No, okay. and uh, much to my chagrin, uh, it did not get fixed. And the reason for it is. <sighs> I've opened up the can of worms. It's going to get fixed. Um, this is my baby, uh, for that matter. It, the cost of it would have been over $120 million. It had blown up the rest of the tax plan. Uh, and it's complex. It has to be, the tables need to be redrawn. I can tell you that uh, the work has already begun and will continue. Uh, it's going to be an interim study on how to be able to get this right. Uh, right now, being married in the state of West Virginia, and say that you, the, the two members that are, the husband and wife, is making $60,000 total. And so let's just say that they pay $6,000 tax. These numbers aren't right, uh, but they're, they're, they're close. Now, they, if they were not married and they were just living in the same house together, and each of them made thirty thousand, they would pay five thousand total between them if you added their two. It's a thousand dollars less. Well, uh, for years I've been getting calls from people saying, "Why is it? Why is it that I, whenever I file for my taxes and everything, and I get my refund from the federal government for fifteen hundred dollars, that I end up paying the state eight hundred or a thousand dollars?" Why is that the case? It doesn't make sense. And I've been on the tax department for years, and that's it's and I never got a straight answer. Never understood what was going on, and that came up this year. And I finally nailed it down. And yes, it was Craig Blair that nailed down what was going on. So when we put that into the Senate plan to begin with, we knew that we didn't know what the numbers was going to be, but we wanted to bring the awareness to a problem. And the last thing that we want to do, they say that if you tax tobacco uh, at a higher rate, that it deters that behavior. So really, is that what we're doing in the state of West Virginia, is that we're deterring the behavior of having uh, two people in a family, you know, a a mother and a father, 
uh, for, for their children. That's insane. Uh, but the, in reality is, is that I'm, uh, I'm, as we're finding these things, the 60-day clock ticks fast. And, and so we needed to get the tax reform bill across the finish line. But this is not going to go away. We're going to f- find out the details and try to solve this so that we actually treat uh, everybody equally, whether you're married or whether you're not, uh, when it comes to taxation for your personal income tax. When you dealt with a budget, I'm shifting gears on you a little bit now. When you dealt with a budget, you shifted quite a bit from the front end of the process to the back end. Uh, so in uh, surplus appropriation, including some of the medical call, medical services and social services. Uh, is there, and this is, the governor had proposed funding up front. You folks are going to do it through the surplus. Uh, I assume there's quite a bit of assurance that you will, you will be able to fund all of these at the back end of the budget, correct? Yep, and there's nothing new about that. I, yeah. to, I say I, we started that process uh, four years ago when I was the finance chairman of being able to manipulate the, this budget around in such a way that it makes it so that you can squeeze out efficiencies in our agencies, in, in our budget, from ourselves, for that matter, as we're working uh, through the budgetary process and moving things to the back of the budget. And it is paying dividends for the people of West Virginia. If we would not have done things like that uh, four years ago, we would not have had the resources today to be able to have given back tax relief to the people of West Virginia. So the, 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 it's a, the, the, how do I want it? The Center for Budget and Policy, the liberal think tank out there that complain about it. Well, they haven't seen anything that they don't want to spend money on across the board in the state of West Virginia, period, except for maybe tax relief. Uh, and that's, they don't like how we do the budget. Uh, the rest of West Virginia, I believe, loves how we manage the budget because they're getting ready to receive a 21.25 percent, or or 760 million dollars compared to a 4.88 billion dollar budget. Not bad, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we can afford to do it. We can afford to do it long term. We know we can. Yeah, a lot of these that's going to the back end of the budget uh, would, uh, are one time, exp- not one time expenses, but expenses for such as dam uh, dam. Re- Repairs, National Center Institute, uh, and the like. But there's a couple of things with the medical services and social services. What happens in the extreme case if there's not enough money at the back end of the budget to cover medical services and social services? Uh, will they? What impact will it have on those programs? Well, before I become the finance chairman, when we had problems like that, and uh, throughout the year, we just cut the money up front in our budget, and we had to tell everybody, okay, it's 10% reduction. Uh, you got to quit spending, so you're trying to find two and three hundred million dollars in the middle of your fiscal year. Uh, nothing's going to happen with this. The money will actually be there again. It's common practice now to be able to do this uh, and make it so that you've got the money to take care of uh, Medicaid, uh, for instance. So that's the first one that always gets moved to the back of the budget uh, from that standpoint, and it allows us to be able to do the accounting that we need uh, to be able to make this work. Uh, But I I can't stress this enough. The way that we go about doing this has yielded benefits right now that allow for us uh, to be able to have greater resources because we keep squeezing the efficiencies out of these agencies. Everybody's heard to spend it or lose it. You know, did you come to the end of your budget year? Bill, you are a county commissioner. I assure you that there was those that were saying if we don't spend it next year, they'll lower our budget amount down because the, the, we, we didn't spend everything in there. Okay, the federal government's notorious for that. Well, so was the state government. And, and make no mistake about it, I, I, I don't very often take credit. This is my brainchild. Okay, and it has paid dividends and also said of uh, when we did it, uh, that if we're successful, we're going to have so much money uh, in four or five years because it's compounding, okay? Uh, 137 million, 137 million, 148, 148 allowed for $572 million uh, to be able to do that. Uh, and so that that's because of how we're managing the budget 
budget and squeezing these efficiencies out. Just like PIA, when I was talking to Bay, we have been shifting dollars over on PIA and actually subsidizing the federal government. Okay, and it takes getting into the weeds and all this, and it doesn't make for good radio. And uh, and I'm not the guy to even do that. I've, what I do is I <laughs> assemble teams to be able to, to to go in and drill into this. And and that's and I say that I say it, the speaker does, and we all get together and we craft solutions that are good for the people of West Virginia. Senate President Craig Blair, our guest. Just a couple of minutes to go here before he has to run off and do some other stuff here. Craig, the seven hundred and sixty million dollars price tag for the cuts that does not include the pay raise of twenty three hundred dollars for all state employees or it does include the pay raise ask that question again all right the 760 million dollar fiscal note you gave us was the total accumulation of all the tax cuts correct yes that's it how much does the twenty three hundred dollar pay raise about to be issued per employee cost I don't. I can send you the paperwork on it. I've got talking points here. Of uh, I don't know what that is off the top of my head. Okay, that'll that'll uh, kick I, in next fiscal year anyway, correct? Yeah, and it's half of this year on that. On the pay raise? Yeah. No. 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 Pay raise. Well, actually, the I know I'm thinking out loud here of uh, the pay raise. It's probably half a year also. No, 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 it's not. No, it's not. It's running, the pay raise runs in a fiscal year. Fiscal year, July and, 1. Right. Right. Uh, on that. So I don't have that number off the top of my head. And I'm sorry, but I've got a thousand things going on Understandable. Here. And uh, I don't have it. And. Uh, Will you be? Get, will you get this this tax cut? Will you get it dynamically scored to uh, see exactly how much growth it generates as well? We do that on everything anymore. So the answer is yes to that. So, um, thank you for asking that question. I'm going to have the, the talking points on the pay raises. It is not listed here because uh, I had them put that together. And I'm going to have them go back and have the total on that. And hopefully I can get you the answer to that before your show's over. If not, you'll have it for tomorrow's segment. You can talk about that. Very good. Thank you, sir. I know you have to run. I appreciate your time. 